Today I will speak about recovery. All of you go through cycles of upliftment and depression, and upliftment and depression, happiness, unhappiness. It is natural, it is part of growth. It is similar how the plants go through the cycle of seasons. It's similar how the butterfly goes into the cocon and then becomes a caterpillar and backwards. <clears throat> you go through compression, you become small, you unite with your you your spirit collapses in a small bowl. But then it's up to you, it is your choice, it is your effort, it is your opportunity to come back. Recovery is done by you. It's not somebody is making it for you, it is your work to recover, your upliftment, your coming back, you coming up. It is art. There is no predetermined formula. It is life. It is part of this illusion. It is part of the design of this illusion of life. Even most enlightened of you, even most enlightened of us, in the physical form, have to go through cycles of sadness, of transformation. For people who are not aware it is the end of the world, often it seems like the end of the world. It's often the loss of direction, loss of health, loss of meaning of life, loss of support. But for those of us, those of you who know, who understand, who are aware, it is just a phase. It is just a phase. When it seems like everything is black, <clears throat> when it seems like everything is lost, when the path to recovery seems impossible, there is always a little bit of hope, always a little bit of light left. You might lose your belief in people, your trust in people, but there is still, possibly, understanding of beauty. There is still possibly connection to plants and nature and animals. <clears throat> there is still possibly something inside which is holds the flame, holds the light. Just because you can sense the depression, can sense the darkness, can perceive that it is what you don't like, that it is not what you like. It means there is not, not yet everything lost. There is something yet to look at it. There is something yet to judge. So true you is still there. And then there is a path for recovery. First, <clears throat> you might want just to put an intention, I want to recover. Sometimes it's impossible to believe, it's hard to believe, it's difficult to believe that you can recover. but. Still, 
the intention to recover is essential. The desire for good, the desire for light is essential. It is a trial, it is a test. When you are in darkness, will you choose light? Will you choose to come back? It requires faith. It requires hope. It requires at least some strength. So keep breathing. And hold on to your breathing. As long as you are alive, you can breathe. And as long as you breathe, there is something to hold on to. You also have your memories. There is always something to hold on to in your memories, some dear light, some dear love, some connection. Realize your sadness, your depression is an illusion based on time. Some time ago, in the past, you weren't depressed, you were in the light. So it is time, it is an illusion of time that helps you to realize who you are and to develop, to change, to transform. So the recovery requires, it requires the desire to change. And it is hardest because when you are in the dark, you're so afraid you're so afraid to fall apart that you are afraid of change. You are full of fear because you, if you change, you might fall apart. If you change, it might become even worse. But yet, to recover, you need to change. Yourself, not out not outside, not the environment. You need to change yourself. Your spirit, your body, yourself, you need to transform. So first you need the intention. <clears throat> Second, you need the desire to change. Allowance of to change. You need to allow yourself to change it. And as you start shifting, you need a sense of balance. As you shift, you need a sense of balance. As you transform, you need to keep the balance. You need to stay centered in the balance, connected to the light, connected to the center, connected to your heart, connected to your spirit. As you recover your connection to the spirit, as you recover your flow of love, if you, as you recover your flow of energy, hold on to it, hold on to the light. Hold on to guidance. Because when you shift, things start transforming around. Your control over the situation goes away, so you are shifting without the control of situation. A faith is required and a desire, the intention to stay in the center, to stay balanced. As you shift, intend to stay balanced. As you shift, ask for support, ask for protection, ask for a reconnection and ask for balance.
it's like an acrobat walking on a wire. You need to move forward, but yet you have to stay in balance. And it's easier to stay in balance as you move forward. Because staying in the dark is more scary than moving forward. That is the major understanding, the major realization you need. Staying in the dark is more dangerous than moving forward. <clears throat> now take a deep breath. <sighs> Keep breathing deeply and consciously. Stay in balance. Stay relaxed. And focus on your breath. And as you breathe in the magic air, the magic elixir of life, bring the golden light into your heart. Smile. Appreciate. It is a great illusion. It's a great play of nature. And you have part in it. Appreciate. Enjoy. You can come back. You can shine. As you shift, you will be given new energies. Be ready to take them. <coughs> As you shift, you will be given new energies. Be ready to take them. Allah I invite comments and questions. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Who is speaking? This is Peace. Hey, Peace. <laughs> Sakina. <Yeah>. Hey, Sakina. <laughs> uh, Yogananda, you had um, mentioned about my brother. Yes. That, um, so Baba mentioned that he's still around because the family uh, is not letting me you know, worried, and so he wants them to be at peace, and um, so he's around, and so I was wondering, that's why I was wondering that it's been so many days, and <laughs> you, you were going to take me, uh, is it going to be something I will uh, know and realize, and actually can see? Do you normally see the such things? No, pardon me? Do you normally see the spirits? Do I feel the spirits. I'm not s seeing it. Remember when you came, I felt you. Yes. I so most likely you will do that. You will just feel. But it's would... up to you and it is up to your state. If you are in a state where you are open to the spirits and open to interpret the spirits, interpret your feelings as spirits, then you will feel. If you are not in tune with the spirits, if you are more into physical, you might miss that point. But you, that is, you are going to come and t uh, hold my hand and take him on the other side, is that right? Absolutely, yes. Oh, I wish, I, I, I really, really want to feel it and I really want to see it too. Um, you know, is it something that I'm going to be doing? Uh, you're helping me to practice now? Practice. <clears throat> okay. Hmm. 
No, what I'm saying is that is that something that I'm supposed to do and you're helping me to get started? Or I've been doing it and I'm not knowing it. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, let me think. Hmm. <clears throat> what is there to practice? It is a simple process which is which doesn't have at the moment much structure. It is just awareness combined with intention. Awareness combined with intention. So first you become aware of his presence, the proper timing, and my presence. And then there is an intention to help him to move ahead, to cross to the other side. Also, there is the understanding, the realization of completeness. Realization that it is time to let him go. So for you to release and trust that, this is, that it is a right thing to do, to cross over. So from that point on, after he crosses over, you will have a different connection to him because he is going to be on the other side. And the sensation would be somewhat different. So practicing is, as usual, the awareness of the spirit, the meditation, the connection to the spirit, the breathing exercises, the yoga exercises, the prayer, the mantras, inviting your favorite manifestations of God, connecting to them, being them, manifesting them, realizing them. Now, we will do a little meditation. Consider it as a practice. Practice meditation, same thing. We will practice now of accepting my healing, my love, my gratitude, my energy, my support, which is a flavor of a bigger love, bigger healing, bigger energy, bigger support. Allahumma Place your palms on your heart. I'm coming to you through your spine and through your heart. Allahumma Focus on your breathing. Allah Yahanna Allah Smile, smile, smile. Allah When you smile and when I smile, we synchronize. We synchronize on green and golden colors. Green the chakra color of your heart chakra. And golden, the color of healing and love. Allah 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 I'm coming to your heart and to your palms. Your palms 
when you feel heat in your palms, amplify it, lighten it up, warm it up. When you feel the heat in your heart, that's me, welcome it, invite me. I'm coming with love and with happiness, with joy. Allah Oh, Just for a minute, just for a second, for this moment, for this eternity, eternity, eternity. Be happy, release the pain, release the darkness. Stay in the light with me. I am in light, join me. Step towards the light. Allah Oh Mahayana Oh Allah Na Am Mahayana Na Melt, melt sadness in your heart. Melt it, release it. If you want to cry, cry. Oh Mahana Ayana. Feel the feminine healing energy of the Divine Mother. Feel the feminine healing energy of the Divine Daughter. Allah Anna. Allah Anna. Connect to your grandmothers, great grandmothers. They all are sending you their love. Accept it. Say, I accept, I accept, I accept. I accept. There is a vortex around you. Imagine yourself being in the center of a galaxy, of Milky Way galaxy. There is a vortex around you, flat vortex of the galaxy. The stars are spinning around you. You are in the center. You are a big dreamer. You dream it all up. You are with the Divine Mother. You are. A photon, a unit of light. You are a universe. You have your own unique, beautiful, timeless vibration, eternal vibration, deathless vibration. You are the universe. You play the drama of life in your space, in your vibration in your dream. Um, um, you are as powerful, as powerful as you want, as strong as you wish. You can transform your dream at wish, at will. You can transform your dream at will. Allah, you are a strong Loving, balanced, manifesto. You are in the flow. You just need to intend and everything will be transformed. Just be in the flow. Be in harmony with the universe. You are the universe. Allah, be in harmony with the universe because you are the universe. Allah, ya Allah, oh, oh, you are not separate. You are united. Allah, ya Allah, ya Allah, ya Allah, ya Oh, 
Smile. Come back. Carry with you the warmth, the, the light, the flame. Carry it with you. Carry the flame with you. Keep it. Hold it. Sense of happiness, sense of unity, sense of, sense of connectedness. It is yours. <sighs> Any comments, questions? Thank you, Yogananda. That was so beautiful. You're always welcome, you know. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Oh, I love you. I love you too. In fact, you pulled away last time I was because I was overwhelmed and I, I, I cry when I feel your love. And so I said, you're going to please pull away a little bit so I can talk. But <laughs> now you need to come back again. I, I need to feel that powerful love. <laughs> I'm always at your disposal. At your disposal. I I'm always at your disposal. You're receiving. <laughs> Receded because I asked you to, and then you didn't come back again. It's all in your power, it's all in your possession. It's up to you to connect anytime. I'm there anytime. I'm connected now. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you indeed. Any more comments, questions? I have a question, Yogananda. This is Marianne. Hey, Marianne. Um, I've had some metaphysical experiences with you in this lifetime. And I was wondering, uh, I'll explain one of them that was very powerful. I'm wondering what that means. Um, <clears throat> and anyway, so the connection was, occurred in San Diego, Encinitas in the 1990s and I visited your ashram there or your um what sort of they call that um the hermitage and I went into the building and I went into the bedroom as far as I could go <coughs> because there's a, you can't step into the bedroom and I looked at your picture I held my hands up and I said come to me come to me and a flash of light came off the off the picture and hit me in my sixth, <laughs> uh, you know, my sixth spiritual eye, and I was I was amazed and dizzy. So I turned around and slowly walked out to the patio, which faces the Pacific Ocean, and I was crying. I was so moved. I was on my knees. I was going, "Oh my goodness, this is wonderful," that you know because I was starting to follow your path at that point, SRF. And then um, I was just looking at the ocean and then, then I see you up in the sky. I do, I see your face and you coming from the sky, heading toward me, riding across the light on the ocean and you just melted over me. So then I just, I said, wow, this is just tremendous. It's like, I'm one with you. There's no doubt about it. And then I meditated for a long time there and I felt very close to you. I mean, I always have felt close to you, but that was my wake up call. And so that connection, I'm just wondering um, what past lives did we have that brought me to this closeness to you? And what does that mean? Are you my guide? Mm.
Max is here. I why is me? Because I guess because of Max's fear, right? Because of Max's fear to interfere. <laughs> fear to interfere. I'm so afraid to give him incorrect information that I I kind of block the flow. Because it is a miracle and I'm afraid of a miracle. But what I can grasp is that, yes, there was an incarnation, and it was one of the male uh, disciples uh, among the children in the school, uh, one of the Yogananda school in India. And also there is a, there is a connection, I mean, as incarnation, there is also a connection on genetical level, which is hard to believe, but there is a sense of ancient bloodlines going through all races. And you belong to the same bloodline as Yogananda and connect on genetics as well. And you go into the past, past incarnations, they are of the same soul family which plays together there, incarnates together and plays together, plays out together the drama and serves the enlightenment. That's my sensation. So you have the same uh, long history of incarnation, same um, thread of the life, of the tree of life. Yeah, thread on the same thread of the tree of life. Mm. Yeah, I guess when uh, there is a request for confirmation, then Max kind of provides some information which would uh, can be interpreted one way or another. So this way it's easier to provide that information. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Just hold on a second, I will try to pull a little more. Just a second. <laughs> Flowers, purple flowers, like bushes with uh, little, little flowers on the bush. Maybe it's like lilac or lilac-like flowers. And the same white, white, white bushes with white flowers. And the smell of these flowers. Fruits, fruits, bananas, pears, simple life, milk, river, more like a creek, simple fire, simple life, and dreams about God, connection to God, just boys uh, more interested in God than in simple life, but sharing simple fruits, simple flowers, simple perception of life. Um, uh, seeing the mountains afar on the horizon. Um, uh, on, um, oh, a simple life, not too many worries, just work and dreams. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, nah, um, um, a white goat, female goat, um, uh, small white female goat. Um, uh, yeah, nah, um, 
reading ancient texts, talking about ancient texts, learning from others who read ancient texts, ancient books, discussing ancient books, more interested in the um, ancient legends than life, taking life as a simple life and Dreaming about ancient legends. Oh, 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 Just sense of balance, sense of peace, sense of perfection, completeness. There is no desire to move anywhere, to achieve anything. It's just being, enjoying the stories. Like children tell the stories, like teenagers tell the stories, and just enjoying the stories, living more in the stories, and taking the physical as just illustration to these stories. That's a perfection, a complete perfected state of excitement and balance at the same time. No more desire other than just to be in that state, that space, that loving play that's all allahumma rahannahumma oh rahanna <laughs> that's all thank you thank you Any more comments, questions? <coughs> Any more comments, questions? Let's do a final guided meditation and um Allah. Now we will meditate on the idea of perception. Relax. Um, uh, relax, relax. Breathe consciously. Turn your palms, your senses, in a relaxed way outside. We'll connect to the outside world in a grateful, joyful, enjoyable sense. We will meditate for a change on the outside world. We will perceive the beauty of the outside world. Whatever noise you hear, whatever noise you hear, listen to it. Absorb it and hear the noise of the universe. Be grateful, joyful, appreciative of elementals, the beings, the spirits who create this illusion. Appreciate the gods, the aspects of gods, the representations of God who create this big drama, this dance of Shiva, this illusion. Listen to it, listen to it, listen. Any noise is a noise of beautiful ocean. Shh, shh, shh. Hear the breathe of the ocean, the breathing of waves, the breathing of atmosphere, the breathing of the planet, the breathing of the solar system, breathing of the universe. It's all breathing, living organism, all united with you, all sharing the energies with you. Perceive it, absorb, absorb the beauty 
sends the clothing on you, perceive it through touch sense, through warmth sense, through electric sense. You are touching the outside world. Feel the air, feel the flow of air, feel, feel the magnetism, the magnetic particles, the charged particles of the air, feel the subtle energy between the atoms of the air because even the vacuum around you the vacuum the vacuum still has a lot of subtle vibrations feel all of them it's all one big illusion it is beautiful harmonious it is all yours you can experience it through your body through your senses through your perception be appreciative of this gift of matter, of life, of illusion of material world. It's all beautifully, harmoniously designed for your upliftment. Expand your senses beyond your body. Wider, wider. Feel the room around you. It's all made of loving energy, wood, paper, plastic, metal, all is one big living crystal, all is united, all made of energy, all made of vibration, all made of matter and vacuum, exchanging subtle energies. Connect your DNA to the DNA of wood around you. It's still there. Connect your proteins with the proteins around you of wood, of organic matter. Proteins, leftovers of organic substance in the soil. In the soil. Feel the life around you. Insects, worms, slugs. All there, all alive, all making this universe tick, roll, spin, breathe, burn, be alive. It's all there. It is not only your dream, it is a mixture of dreams. It is a concoction of dreams. It is a cocktail of dreams. It is a mosaic of dreams, a big painting painted by many artists at once, a living painting, a living creation. Appreciate it, be grateful, joyful, you are part of it, you play it, and by playing you manifest, you ensoul it. Your soul is part of this creation. You co-created the stars in the sky. They are for you to see, but also as you see them, you make them stronger. You co-create the stars. You co-create the planet. You co-create the atmosphere. You co-create the ocean. It's all yours. It is a co-creation. Expand to the city around you, to people around you. You share the DNA. They all are relatives of yours. They all are the same species. You all have same ancestors. Centuries ago, centuries ago, you all have same ancestors. You all come from the same family. Centuries ago, centuries ago, you have same family. You had the same mother, same father. With all of them, every one of them, all humans, you are siblings, brothers, sisters, cousins. <laughs> Expand your awareness to the spirit beyond the veil, to the spirits of humans beyond the veil. They all are made of the same soul as yours. 
They just awakened from your dream and you are still dreaming. They all are of the same family tree of life. Connect to them. They are closer than you think. They are within you. They are all to your help. They are all the experiences are yours. Good experiences, bad experiments, experiences. When you create your experience of life, when you dream your dream of life, they play along, they share their knowledge, experience, expertise, the traumas, the solutions, love, hatred, fear, all is yours. All elements for you to create your life. Say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Allah Yahanna You are all one love. You are all one dream. Expand, expand. Feel, feel the outside universe. You are the body. You are the soul. You are one. You are the universe around your body. You are all souls. You are one. You are unity. You are in harmony. Allah We are all united. We are all united. Hear the sounds. Absorb the sounds. Be your ears. Hear through all your chakras. Perceive the universe through all senses. Through all chakras, through every cell in the body, through every chromosome in every cell, through every protein in every cell, through every molecule of water in your body. Sense the universe, receive the universe, absorb the universe. It's all one dance, all one play. It's all yours. Enjoy it through your life. Enjoy it now. It's beautiful. It is harmonious and it is for you to learn, expand, grow. It is for you to help, serve, help others to expand and grow, help others to awaken. It's for you all to awaken, 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 awaken. Okay, I'm bringing Max. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Thank you, Max. Mm. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Max. <laughs> All right. I stay here. If you want to chat, I'm here. Max is here. Ah. Mm. Thank you for coming in. Uh huh. Being reachable. Uh huh. Shh, shh, shh. Any questions to Max? Any comments to Max? <laughs> All right. Uh, talk to you. Oh, you raised hand. Okay. Did you really raise ha raise hand, Marianne? Did you want to say something? Oh, uh, no, I didn't think I raised my hand, but it okay. was a very a very interesting, um, you know, answers back. Um, <clears throat> the recognition that we were together. Yeah, I, I want. I just had to ask that because I really felt that. It was there, yeah. Yeah, I feel jealous. I felt jealous. My jealousy was so strong, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't hold it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had that experience. <laughs> yeah, I will go to that room as soon as possible. Maybe on Sunday. It's very special. The whole place. He helped design the gardens, um, some of the plants, the fish. Um, it's very pleasant to sit around the, the fish and meditate. 
there's a lot of places to meditate. He liked to be in the swimming pool. So if you meditate by the swimming pool, his energy is really there a lot. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I spend time on the beach, just meditating on the beach, connecting to the water. And um, yeah, that's happiest time ever. Yeah, I wonder what Uganda did. He possibly... Yeah, he walked up and down. Yeah, he walked up and down that beach. I I am south. I am uh, on uh, La Jolla shores mostly. But oh. uh, he has uh, he has his uh, how do you call it uh, place in uh, in San Diego as well. Right. Yeah, it would be nice to feel that place where his beach is. I will go check it out. I don't know yeah, when well... I was. I went once there, or twice, I went twice there, but I didn't feel too much. I didn't feel too much. It was like something quite foreign for me. Mm -hmm. I was hoping to feel some uh, connection, but because he's not my past incarnation, so I don't have to feel it, but uh, it would be nice to have that connection as well. Yeah. Are you talking mm -hmm. about Anita's, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was there uh, <coughs> in 1991, and I stayed there for four days. It was, vibrations were very strong. Wow. Very Did you stay in ashram or outside? Inside, inside ashram. I was a devotee of Yogananda from 88, and I'm, of course, he's my still my teacher. He, you always have the guru, and they're always your gurus, right? Um yeah, at that time, uh, I had uh, joined the Yoganda in 88, and uh, we were finding a cure for my friend's uh, uh, cancer, so we went to Yogananda's ashram, and then we went to down to New Mexico from there. Oh, wow. Stayed there for four days, yes. It was very powerful vibrations. <laughs> I think I had a connection with him. Yeah, he had came to me a couple of times. Where is New Mexico? I don't know geography much. Well, down uh, from San Diego. We used to go from San Diego uh, to, I mean, Mexico, not New Mexico. Mexico. Oh, here you go. Because New Mexico is not down. It's more like... Uh, no, no, not New Mexico. No. There is uh, California, Arizona, New Mexico is uh, towards Texas. Okay. Yeah. So you just went to Mexico. Mexico, where the clinics were, like, you know, there are a lot of uh, cancer cure clinics. Oh, I see. There, right. Mm -hmm. So, we used to drive from San Diego. We stayed in San Diego. Then we went to, first we went to Encinita, stayed there, and then we went and had the treatment. I mean, she had the treatment. Okay. How was it, How was your treatment? Oh, not my treatment. Um, I had later cancer, but uh, she... Um, uh, she was good, and then we went to Diamond, Diamata, you know, um, and she also replied in the letter that, you know, doctors are also there by, you know, God has created the doctors too. Mm -hmm. so, but I, I, you know, I was not, I, I wanted God to cure. I just felt that she's uh -huh. going to cure. And um, so, so come the doctor in January, the doctor said that, you need to have surgery now. Mm -hmm. And I said, no. I told her, no, we won't have it now. Let's take some time and see how long it's going to take um, for you to, uh, for the cancer to become really dangerous. So I asked the doctor how long does she have? She said, one year. And so in that year, we went to Yogananda's ashram everywhere in India. And oh, then, wow. Yeah. Uh, and we also went to Encinitas. But with Encinitas, we went first, and then we went to the ashram. We went to Yogananda's house, uh, and we saw the room where he escaped, mm -hmm. you know, uh, upstairs room, and we met his uh, family, and he, they showed pictures of him and all. And then we went to, um, uh, you know, the, the ashram where uh, close to, where is that? Um, Yogananda's ashram in Calcutta, in you know, going mm -hmm. further east, and uh, so we went over there too, and uh, so I've, there are many stories. I want to go there. I want that too. <laughs> oh, it was beautiful. All the ashrams, were, especially the one in um, 
Well, I went to Puri too, where uh, Sri Yukteswarji saw ba ba uh, Babaji. Uh huh. Yeah, and uh, before that, the first trip, trip we took was um, uh, in uh, where, where is the one in the north? Now I, I'm, you know, I forget now. Um, the one in the north after Rishikesh, you take a take a bus, and then you go over there, uh, Dwarahat. He's got an ashram in Dwarahat. It is so beautiful, and no cars can go up there. Uh -huh. I mean, no the buses go there. So only the private taxi or private cars, they need to come and take you. So there's not any crowd there either. Uh -huh. and, and there are steps of that green, and you see the Himalayas right there. And uh, the, the, it, it is breathtaking, that ashram. It is beautiful. And uh, uh, so we were there uh, for a little while. And then uh, a brahmachari over there, uh, he took us, um, it, it was another place where um, Babaji's uh, cave is, mm -hmm. you know, Babaji's cave in, uh, in the forest over there. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know which town it was, and we, we went over there, and that's where even Pandavas, you know the Pandavas? Um, Sounds familiar. The five brothers, you know, the, the war of Kurukshetra took place between the five brothers and, and you know. From Bhagavad Gita? Mahabharata. Maha, 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 yeah. yeah, I heard yeah. about it, yeah. So the Pandavas were hiding because they were supposed to hide for 14 years. Mm -hmm. and, and so they were hiding in that forest. And so we passed their spot where they were. And we could still see a little hut. Uh, not hut. There was no hut, but there was brick formation. You know, there was stones there. Mm -hmm. And so we went, went past there. And we went to Babaji's uh, cave went to Babaji's cave and I had a powerful experience because I had, because I was so hurt, I had stopped, I, I wanted to stop my heart from loving and, you know, so I became a zombie and then um, I wanted, this is like years and years ago, um, and I wanted to feel pain again, I wanted to feel love, I wanted to feel joy, I wanted to feel pain um, because I was feeling so much pain that I said I don't want to feel pain anymore and I just shut off my heart and I couldn't open it and it was really hard mm -hmm. and so when we went to Babaji's cave um, there was all those leaves over there and they shut off the cave area because uh, you know the animals were going there um, so there was a platform and there were leaves over there and there was dust so the brahmachari was uh, took some leaves and branches and he was trying to clean, he was cleaning it. I said, let me clean his uh, place. So I took that and I started cleaning. As I started cleaning it, my heart opened up to joy of cleaning and joy of doing. And so he, he opened me up. It was very hard. I, I was praying and praying and praying. And then finally he, he came into my heart and he opened, opened the door, you know? Was, wow. Yeah. I want to go there. <laughs> oh, you should go there. That that is uh, Rishikesh is a beautiful. I mean, Dwarahat. Oh my God, the ashram is so beautiful. I don't know now. It was in ninety one. Uh, so <coughs> I'm sure it is beautiful. You know now too because not, there's not much traffic going there. You just the villagers. Uh, you know, taking the wood on the heads and they're walking and very peaceful, very beautiful. Is there Uber there? Pardon me? Is there Uber? Uber? <laughs> Uber. Well, they come and pick you up. The ashram, if you contact them, they come pick you up and then you can stay in the ashram there. There's an ashram. Wow. It's a beautiful, yeah, it's very beautiful ashram right on the top of the hill and you go out and you see the snow peak, Himalayas. In summertime. When, when I usually travel, I um, do all, all the planning myself online and kind of plan it around, imagine it, and like I just go according to, by myself usually. So yeah. um, I can't imagine myself taking a guide, but I guess here you would rather take a guide, right? Yeah, well, like, yeah, because I knew the language and it's, it's very hard, uh, the train traveling, because you need advanced booking and you, you've got... It, it's good to have somebody because the train stations you need to go at a certain spot you, if you have your passport you know you can 
we had to sleep on the <laughs> we had to sleep sleep on the train station sometimes. <laughs> because, oh gosh. Uh, yeah, because we were just traveling. We we didn't have much time, and we didn't have much time to, you know, book seats or anything. And so uh, we we just roughed it out, you know. <laughs> uh, so you just have Yogananda to help you out. <laughs> I mean, you're manifesting. I mean, you're channeling Yogananda. He'll help you to get there. You know. But it'd be good if you go with somebody who's Indian and, uh, you know, or somebody who speaks the language. Mm -hmm. Go through that. It'd be nice. Yeah. Maybe, 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 Feels maybe, good. Feels good. I, I don't know. I would like also, to go. You'd probably have to go to Delhi or something, New Delhi. And then from there, there might be buses going up to Dwaraha, uh, trains. The trains go up. Maybe there is a... a Oh, you know what? You should contact our self-realization fellowship and see if there's some kind of a travel agencies that may arrange all this. You know, mm -hmm. to go to Dwaraha. Mm -hmm. well, SRF doesn't do that, but devotees do. They they have tours. They advertise and say, "Hey, we're going on this tour and northern <coughs> route, the southern route." And some of those folks are in San Diego area that do those. This this is north. This is north India. In the uh, yeah, are, they do they yeah. do both. They hit the Kumbh Mela and all that stuff. Kumbh Mela, uh, Kumbh Mela. I don't know where Kumbh Mela is. I think it's more in the center, right? I don't know. I've never been. Yeah, almost went, went but then uh, then I didn't go. <laughs> The crowd is tremendous, you know. So. But it was quite a dream. It was like a dream passing through all the ashrams, all of them. We planned on going on from 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 Dwarahat to uh, Benares, and then we went to Lahiri Mahasaya's uh, mm -hmm. home, uh, and from Lahiri Mahasaya's home, uh, we went. Um, where was that? Calcutta. Yeah, so we went to the Calcutta and then to Yogananda's house and then to Yogananda's ashram further, further east. And then we also, um, yeah, we went to Puri and Shaoshu Yukteswarji's, uh, you know, dwelling and the place where Babaji came. And then we also went to, um, well, uh, what was that? Uh, Ramana. Ram, Ramakrishna, uh, Ramakrishna temple is right on the Ganges, and the Yogananda ashram is on the Ganges. It's beautiful, uh, even on the east coast. It's right on the Ganges River. It's so powerful, and um, uh, uh, the uh, what was the name? Ram Krishna, Ram Krishna. The artis are so beautiful. Early in the morning, they have a huge temple there not too far from Yogananda's ashram. And um, it, it, is, it is beautiful. It, it, just the chanting of uh, Ramakrishna Arti, if you hear it sometimes on, uh, online on um, YouTube, it is amazing. It's an amazing feeling. Yeah. It's much easier for me to travel to Russia and then Russia. <laughs> <laughs> they all ashrams everywhere, you know. In India, one thing is you can get into ashram everywhere, <laughs> and you hardly pay anything, you know. And they provide food and everything. Wow! Oh, I found yeah, I found three places. Uh, Google knows three places for Yogananda ashrams. One is in the north. Uh huh. Yeah, Dwarahat, Dwarahat. Nioda Uttar Pradesh. Uttar Pradesh? Yeah. Uttar Pradesh is north, north of India. Uh huh. Second one is in Garhand, Ranchi, Gosa in Tola, Ranchi, Gar, Jar, Jar, oh, Jar, Jarkhand. And the south one is at. Uh, Karnataka. 
Bengaluru. Karnataka would be in the south, right? Yeah, so yeah, okay. that's the south. That's a ranch. Yeah, ranch is in the north, right? Near Calcutta, right? Uh, but not yeah, north. ranch is a, uh, yeah. East, northeast. Uh huh. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's where you're at. Yeah. Right on the Menares River, but uh, Ganges. Interesting. <clears throat> you do it when you're young. <laughs> a lot of energy, <laughs> roughing it out like that. It was a. It was really rough, but the way we did it, you know. Yeah. But she got cured. She, we, uh, when we came back, um, uh, we were led, Yogananda led us to, well, Yogananda led me to Baba. And, uh -huh. then, and then Baba is the one who cured her because we didn't know about Baba. And Yogananda appeared to me when I was in Self-Realization Fellowship uh, meditation, and he appeared to me because I said, Yogananda, I love you so much, but I really want to go to Baba. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, said, I love you, but I really, and you know how Self-Realization Fellowship, they're, they're very strict about, you know, going from one guru to the other guru or something. And so I was just praying to Yogananda that, please, you know, I really would want to go to Baba. And so one day when I went uh, in Atlanta, uh, I was uh, at a devotee space where they had every, every Sunday meditation. So I was in the meditation and that's when I had started to go to Baba's group too. And they had a music and I love music and, you know, uh, bhajans and, you know, there was more singing and all that. Uh, while sexualization what was more meditation. I did a lot of it, you know, I, I did, I think, I was ready for it. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so then Yogananda, he, I was meditating at their place and he appeared. He appeared and he was like, he must be about 10 feet tall or something. But I, his, his, his knee was like this high, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. His dhoti was on top of the knee and I couldn't even see his other form. It was just, I, I saw his huge feet, you know? And, and so then I did the Pat Namaskar. I did the Pat Namaskar, like, you know, in this lifetime I, I'd never done because I'm not Hindu. And so I didn't know what Pat Namaskar was. So I did Pat Namaskar and it was so beautiful. It was like a river running into the ocean, I felt. Like everything from inside of me poured out into him. You know, it was like I was one with him. And, um, and I, I could feel my lips touching his skin, his feet skin, you know, skin of his feet, because I kissed his feet. And uh, then it's like he blessed me to go to Baba, you know. And so there, there is a very, and Baba loves Yogananda a lot, you know. He, he always mentions that my students are, are going to be Yogananda of the West, you know. And uh, so then Baba, we went in uh, December time after the trip, to Yogananda, all the ashrams. Um, <coughs> it, it was time for her to have surgery. And so last minute, uh, we had made an appointment for surgery. And I said, oh my God, I hate surgery. I, even at the last minute, if it happens, I'm gonna go to the surgery room and <laughs> pull the doctors away. <laughs> you know? So we we talked to a guy, uh, to a person who was in Yogananda, uh, Yogananda group. And so he said, um, you know, we said, do you know anybody who's a healer, you know, and she's got cancer and we, we, we have made an appointment on Tuesday for surgery if we can find somebody. So it was like a Friday and Tuesday we made an appointment and Friday e evening he came over to our place. <laughs> and so he said, yeah, you know, uh, there is uh, such a Sai Baba and he cures just like Jesus Christ. He brought dead people alive and he's, he cures and he's, so I said, wow, you know, I, I was just waiting for somebody like that, you know. And so I said, okay, let's find out if there is some group over here. And so he found out. And then on Sunday morning, we went to the group. And when I saw Baba's picture, I felt like I was him and he was me. It was so powerful. It's the first time I'm seeing him, you know. And uh, then somebody had uh, uh, Amrit. Amrit is the nectar of heaven like ambrosia right it it comes off from baba a lot of baba's articles like picture mm -hmm. frames and stuff mm -hmm. 
and it when you so one lady had that little bit and it's very hard to get it in us and so when she had it and i went and somehow she came to get coffee and i didn't know anybody over there i just like i was new we just went over there and we wanted to find out about baba where he is so she could go and be cured by him <laughs> and so she came to get coffee and i said do you know somebody who has um the uh, the sweet nectar she saying you're talking about amrit so i said yeah you know that's probably what it's called and she's the only one in that whole group of um uh, 300 people who had gathered there it was a holy night where all night they had meditated and chanted uh, and played the bhajans and the next morning we go over there and so she had little bit and that's the person i went to ask for <laughs> you know so she 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 was surprised that why did i come to her because nobody else had it and so she gave us the nectar and and so we had that and it was like heavenly it was heavenly that nectar it was so floral it's just hard to describe it was like ambrosia and then somebody got a video and we went home and looked at the video and it <clears throat> when baba was walking i just felt powerful love par beyond i just fell in love with him it was the divine love you know the the divine romance or what you know it was so powerful and he looked like he was gliding <laughs> instead of walking so i told my friend that you know he he feels like me he would not lie about this thing i think you should cancel the appointment and go to india <laughs> you know and and so i helped her to go to india and so we canceled the appointment the doctor was very worried and so i said no we canceling the appointment i was very happy so she <laughs> went to india and then she <clears throat> stayed there for a few months and then baba cured her wow wow hey yeah. yeah wow uh sabrina i need to wrap up because my 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 kids already sleeping uh sabrina asked if we can um mm. do the meditation for the Uh, earth because there was some accident there and we need to kind of put our intention to heal in the timeline so uh, let's do that okay okay <coughs> i'll do it short and simple um uh, Feel your feet. Put them on the ground. Connect to the ground through your feet. Pull the energy from your heart through the feet to the center of the earth. Allah. Visualize the energy coming from your tailbone from your spine down to the center of the earth the third root of energy third stream of energy laser stream of energy coming to the ground grounding connect the energy from your <clears throat> top of your head to the sun doesn't matter where the sun is at the moment just connect it make a cur curve line to the sun so there is a resonance sun your spine center of the earth your spine sun earth sun earth you in the middle sun earth allah 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 keep breathing be at peace smile we are sending our healing our intention is to heal the timeline to heal the planet allah allah we are united the sun the earth and our body our intention our soul 
there is gratitude to the Divine Mother, to the Creator, to the Universe for this healing. We are sending our gratitude, our happiness, our joy. We heal the timeline. We respect the time. We love the creators of time. We love the creators of this illusion. We are grateful for our life, for this illusion of life, for, the, for this miracle of experience of life. We are the life on earth. We are grateful. We are in love. We are the expression of the divine harmony. We are united with the planet. We heal ourselves, our timeline and the planet. We heal the time. Our breath is time. We breathe time. The flow of our blood is time. We heal our blood. We heal the time. Our blood is full of the water of earth. We are united with the ocean through our water. We heal the ocean. We heal the ice. We heal the time. We heal all the matter, all the ether of the planet. Allah, we harmonize it, we harmonize, we close the gaps, we close the gaps, we close the breaches, we disconnect the breaches of whales, we respect the whales, we love the whales, we are one with the whales. Allah, Allah, Allah. We speak to dolphins, we thank the dolphins for their help, we invite their healing. Allah. We speak to the whales. We thank the whales for their help. We invite the healing. Allah, Allah, Allah. We are all mammals. We are here to keep the vibration high. We are entitled to have the healing power and we use the healing power to heal the gap, to heal the bridge, to heal the disharmony, to heal the fear and pain. We unite we heal, we rebalance, we unite, we heal, we rebalance. Allah, 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 Om Maharam, Ayyahanna, <coughs> Om Mahayahanna, Om Ayyahanna, Om Mahaya Om Mama. With this, I disconnect. Have a good evening. You may continue the meditation. And when you go to sleep, continue the meditation. Continue holding the vibration. Goodbye.